Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Hearts of Arm 4 as we're going to be starting a new series today as Mexico. So as many of you guys know, I've been wanting to do a Mexican campaign for quite some time, essentially ever since they got a new national focus tree with the Man the Guns expansion. And I should mention we are playing with the 1.9.3 patch and the Law Resistance expansion. Uh, but yeah, I've been wanting to play as Mexico for a while. I've put them on every single one of the patron votes except for those that were involving mods and unfortunately they never gotten very much support however one of our upper tier patrons uh, once you're uh, an upper tier patron for X amount of months uh, you get to request a series and so one of our patrons has requested this series uh, so I'm excited to jump into it uh, before we do though I would like to mention one more thing and that is the fact if, if you weren't watching the EU4 series you might not know this but I am recording on a new mic. And during that EU4 series, I felt like I got the settings just about right, about where I wanted them at. Uh, it, it still sounds different. I think it sounds better overall. And I feel like I got all my sound settings about where I wanted them at. However, we had a Windows update today, and as many Windows updates often do, they completely reset all of my sound settings for all my audio devices. Uh, so I had to redo everything, and unfortunately I just didn't have a lot of time to to, to spend on, on trying to get it just right. And I didn't remember what the sound settings were, so it might sound a little bit off. I do apologize if it, if it doesn't sound quite up to par with what my, my videos typically are. Uh, again, though, it just has been one of those, it's been one of those weeks, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this, this new game started. Uh, and we will talk about uh, which direction we're going to be going with Mexico, what uh, ideology we're going to go. Uh, which direction on their focus tree. However, I want to talk about that when we're actually looking at their focus tree, because again, we'll probably look at that for a little while as we as we typically do. Spend a little bit of time uh, kind of you know, studying it. Uh, so let's go ahead and load up this preset, which is going to be a random preset, uh, because the patron did say that he really likes the, the, the random setting where you don't know who's going to be your enemy, who's going to be your friends, and what's going to happen in the game. Now, he didn't necessarily say to turn the random setting on. He just said he really likes random things. But, you know, I'm absolutely fine playing a random one. We haven't done that in a while, uh, having everything completely random. So I think it could be pretty, pretty fun. That Japanese one, we did the default setting, uh, which is a little, a little bit different than random. Uh, you know, it's, it's not completely random. It is based on, like, AI will do modifiers. So I think it'll be fun to have it completely random and just see what happens. Uh, we will go ahead and strengthen the AI. We'll do them like two times each here, even the Americans. And that was the one real requirement that the patron had for the series is that he wanted us to fight the United States. So that's exactly what we'll be doing and we will tick them up too, even though we're a minor power. Uh, I think it should result in a fun challenge and they'll likely be our main enemy. So I, I wanna make sure that they they fight well. Uh, so we're gonna give them two. Everything else as you guys can see here uh, from here on down is just the basic default settings. Nothing else adjusted here. All right, oops. Oh man, <laughs> I'm just messing this up. I like to keep this open so that nobody can see that I didn't, I didn't change anything. Uh, as far as the difficulty, of course, we're gonna be playing on regular. I say this in every every campaign. Uh, I don't like turning these up because for me, they don't make it more challenging. They just make everything take longer. Longer to get political power, longer to get your equipment to build units, and longer to, to be able to pick techs. And since that's the main thing you do in the game is, uh, you know, pick tank and build units and, and spend your political power until you go into war, it just results in a really, really slow early game, uh, a little bit too slow. Uh, so I play in the regular setting and then I find the best way to get the, the, the difficulty is to, you know, give the AI those, those buffs. All right, so let's go ahead and get the, the basics taken care of and then we'll take a look at the focus tree. Uh, we don't have very many tech slots. We have two, that's it. Uh, so... I want to say we don't even have support equipment, so we could probably should build that first. I don't typically go after that, but I'd like to be able to build that. And I don't even know if we'll be able to build this immediately. Uh, I just really want to get it started because I, I just don't like not having support equipment. Most countries start out with it, and I'd hate to, to need it and then not, not be able to build it. Like for like cab units or something like that. Uh, so we're also going to get the electronic mechanical engineering uh, get that research speed up since we're gonna need it with our only two research slots and it's gonna take us a while to get the rest of our research slots I'm gonna build some civilian factories I think we only start with five and you'll also notice that Mexico understandably only has a, a very very low infrastructure uh, it's really only the capital Mexico City here 
uh, that has the 50% and that's not even very good either. Uh, so overall, it's going to be slow building. Uh, we'll build in these 40% here. Try and get these civilian factories done a little bit quicker. But again, we only have five civilian factories, so it is going to take a while. And that does mean that we probably aren't going to go with the intelligence agency uh, right away. Uh, we need to we need to build some stuff first. So we've gotten that taken care of. Uh, as far as our factories, I was going to take a look at those and see what we've got them assigned to. We're getting some artillery. We're getting some close air support. I kind of feel like we should wait on an air force. I feel like that's not an immediate need. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff we're going to need. Just seeing what other, what all they have currently researched. All right, so we're going to go and put this towards the infantry equipment. Try and get a little bit of stockpile there. We only have the two dockyards. We'll build convoys, I suppose. Get a little bit of convoys built. And uh, we will need to trade for one steel. Yeah, we're just going to wait to trade for that. I don't I don't see it's justified trading a civilian factory for one steel. Uh, as far as units go, uh, building up some divisions. We have a little bit of manpower. Uh, we could build some up. However, I don't know if all of our troops here, let's take a look. If all of our troops here have like full manpower or do they need to replenish them? Yeah, so we see what we'll do. We'll select them all. Let's just take a look at the current manpower because you notice they are lacking in strength. Okay, so it's just equipment that they don't have. All right, so we could build some units, uh, but we're not gonna have the equipment for them. As you can see, we don't, we don't have any infantry equipment, so we should probably first focus on uh, replenishing the needs of our current divisions uh, before we uh, get any new ones. As far as the planes we have, we're going to get them training, I suppose. Uh, we should have we should have fuel uh, as Mets go, especially once we get our fuel back from America and, and the Dutch. So let's go ahead and get some of these units training. Uh, let me see what all we have in our stockpile real quick. Uh, it doesn't look like we have anything there. Maybe it's not showing it though since we just loaded into the game. Yeah, we don't have anything in the stockpile. This is what we got. All right, uh, so it's really not even enough to justify having honestly. But we'll keep them out there. We'll train them up. We'll get a little bit of experience. It's fine. And we'll even keep these crappy, you know, air wing sizes. We'll, we'll change them later. Again, this is really just to, to have some units training, get a little bit of air experience. And uh, again, it's probably not going to generate very much. So we got that going. I think we're good to go now. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at the uh, National Focus Tree. Now, uh, the Mexico National Focus Tree is, is, is pretty large overall. And uh, it's one of my favorites that I've seen so far. I've never played with it. I've only looked at it. And so far, I'm really liking it. What I really like about it is that it's got a lot of different choices and options. Uh, and not false choices, as in like, you know, if you remember in the Dutch uh, tree. So what I mean by false choices is that you didn't have two choices. You had one when you think about it. You know, if you went down one branch over here, then that would limit which branch you could go down over here or whatever, you know. Well, this tree is not quite like that. Uh, there are a lot of different options you go with and going down one branch usually there are a few different uh, exceptions here uh, but w for the most part going down one branch does not limit you going down other branches around the focus tree overall you have a lot of different choices to make and we'll you know obviously look at those as we go however I did want to just kind of do a brief overview of the focus tree for those of you that are not familiar with it and uh, we'll also talk about which directions we're gonna be going uh, so obviously here is the you know, domestic branch. Uh, the military one is combined with that, as you can see here. Uh, so these are the military focuses. We've got some good naval ones. I'm, again, I'm not going to look at all of them uh, because there's a lot of focuses, but just kind of go over the, the basics here. This is the uh, military one with all of the, the land, air, and sea focuses all in one place here. Uh, and then, of course, you got to get the National Bank to unlock these two sides. Over here on the right side of the domestic one, we have our first choice, agricultural credit bank or liberalize the banking sector. And overall, there's some pretty good uh, focuses in both of these directions. However, this one is very much a communist uh, branch for the most part. Uh, it does kind of lead you down that route. Uh, I don't think it immediately does, so you don't have to go communist. I think it's at maybe this point right here. Yeah, yeah, this point right here is where you're starting to go communist with the uh, uh, worker militias. So we're not going to go down that route because we're not going to be going communist. We will be going down this route right here. And this will also be the, be the first route that we go down. And I'll explain why uh, after we look at this side of the tree. So this side of the tree is, of course, the domestic and political branch of the tree. 
Uh, one thing I really like about uh, the Mexico one also is it has little special things here for like your church authority and the rebellion. Uh, but I, I did want to uh, to point that out. I know that a few other focus trees has that too, but many of the major countries don't have a little special thing up there, uh, you know, for their unique mechanics. Uh, so that's pretty helpful, uh, especially with the church authority. The first focus of this branch is the plan of Agua Prieta, and it has two different choices here. So this is the first choice. And it doesn't really impact uh, the tree that much. There's a couple uh, focuses you can't go down uh, if you go with uh, this route here. Uh, as you can see here, there's these focuses. Again, though, um, we're not going to be going down this route here. Uh, so we don't really need to worry about that. Uh, but uh, it is key here for how, how you want to deal with uh, Cedillo. Uh, so if you wanted to arrest him rather than support the general, uh, then you would have to go down this route here. That's the only way to deal with that. And again, these are all things that we'll, we'll talk about as we kind of go down the focus tree. Uh, we could spend an hour talking about this if we talked about every individual focus. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, uh, this doesn't affect these down here. Now, it does have an additional effect a little bit later on beyond the little modifiers you get and the political advisor uh, that you'll have available. They each have a different political advisor that you'll get. Uh, and you can see that this one's kind of more geared towards an unaligned approach, while this one's more geared towards a democratic approach. Uh, but uh, other than that, there's one more effect. And if that's if you go down a certain route, uh, which one of these you get here uh, could determine which ruler you have. Uh, but other than that, they don't have that much of an effect on the actual focuses down here. Uh, you can still go for the control of the army, regardless of which one you get here. And there's a lot of uh, focuses here. Again, we'll kind of go through these as we uh, as we play. Uh, but I did want to kind of like outline the fact that this is essentially kind of the, the unaligned branch in a way. Uh, it's kind of like more promoted towards unaligned. Uh, you don't have to go that route. Uh, but if you wanted to go the more theocratic route, uh, then you wouldn't be able to, to get that one uh, right there. It does result in you getting the research slot uh, a little bit quicker than these ones do. Uh, and as far as down here, uh, where it kind of moves into the oil field expansion, because I didn't really cover that because I wanted to point out uh, that uh, this one here does tie into these. Uh, so there is a little bit of effect here. Uh, with this engineering school, you have to either get the northern steel plates or get uh, this one right here. And this will unlock your fifth research slot. So pretty important because uh, I think you can go down this way a little bit quicker then you could maybe go down all the way down here. So unaligned seems to get access to the research slots a little bit quicker. And of course you have, uh, you know, these are all, you know, pretty much based on ideo ideology and how you're going to deal with the uh, nationalization of the oil fields. Uh, if you even are going to do that, or if you're going to kind of have a compromise situation, you can do like compensation and so on, so on. Uh, just many different things that you can kind of do here. Uh, this is the uh, communist uh, branch right here, and this is the kind of German fascist one. And there are multiple ways to go communist and to go fascist in this focus tree, which is one of the things I find really interesting. Uh, so if we were to go back up here, we have the choice between banning political militias or the legacy of the revolution. Uh, while if we do the legacy of the revolution, that unlocks these options here, which these are the uh, other ways that you can go fascist uh, and communist. You have the red shirts or the gold shirts. And you can see a communist revolution here. This one would result in the gold shirts taking over and you'll become fascist. And then they kind of lead down to this one here. And of course the ban political militias also leads down to here. And, and again, this is what I just find so interesting how they, they all kind of lead to the same direction in a way and, and result in you getting additional choices. And so these are all of the uh, like, you know, diplomatic ones. You know, factions and uh, war goals as you start coming down here. You're going to start seeing the war goal ones. You can also get uh, cores on many of the territories. Uh, but essentially what we're going to do here is the one that I, I skipped over. And that's the, the theocratic route. Uh, asked in the EU4 series which direction you guys thought we should go on the focus tree since there are so many different choices. And it seemed like most of the support was for going with a more theocratic route. Uh, a lot of people thought that that'd be the most interesting direction to go rather than, you know, fascist, communist, or, or whatever. Uh, one person who said it said that we could go uh, monarchy through here. 
And that's not true. Um, uh, apparently that was something that actually irritated uh, some players, that there was no monarchy route uh, for the Mexicans. Uh, but yeah, there is not a monarchy route. There is an unaligned, and that's the Knights of Columbus. So this is like a theocratic unaligned. And when I say theocratic, I don't mean like a theocracy, uh, because it's not really a theocratic government per se. It's really more along the lines of uh, removing the separation of church and state, which isn't really, uh, you know, a full theocracy. Uh, you know, if, if that was the case, then every Christian monarchy in the Middle Ages and the early modern period would be a, uh, a theocracy, since you know they didn't really have much of a division between church and state either. You know, the, the you know you had the the clergy, you know, deep in the government, you know, cardinals and and bishops that were helping the the monarchs rule and and and. Uh, you know, many countries, the, the king was very, at the very least, divinely appointed, if not the head of the, the national church in the case of, like, Protestants. Uh, so that's not uh, enough to really call it a theocracy, I'd say. Uh, you know, just removing the you know, separation of church and state. Uh, so they're not theocracies, but they are very much religious-minded uh, governments. And so this is the unaligned route down here. And then this one is actually a fascist theocratic route. And that is what we're going to be doing, guys. And the reason for that, I could have gone with either of these. But the important factor here is the march southwards. And I'll explain in a minute why I don't want to attack America immediately. But I want to do the march southwards. And the only way to do that is as a fascist or a communist country. Now, I think you can technically do this as unaligned, but I think it'd be really, really difficult to do because you have to go down this route. You can't go down this route. This requires either communist or fascist. Uh, you can go down this route, though, and it doesn't necessarily require... If you look at this here, this requires Hispanic Alliance or, or any of these, I think. Uh, Hispanic Alliance or this one, the Bolivarian, the Bolivarian Alliance. And it's, if you notice here, it does say that you can be non-aligned, yet in the Hispanic Alliance. However, in order to get that one, you had to get these ones. And uh, they do increase fascist support all the way down, so or, or communist support, whatever route you end up going. So I think it would be really difficult to get all the way down here, uh, which you know, would be pretty late in the game at that point, and still be unaligned uh, after you went through all these. I think you'd probably be fascist uh, or communist, whichever route you went. So in order to not cause us any issues and, and be restricted uh, from doing these focuses, we are going to go with the theocratic fascism. And I think it'll be interesting. Uh, it's uh, very different. And it's this synarchi synarchism. Excuse me. Uh, so I think it'll be fun. So that's the, that's the route we're going, guys. And again, we'll, we'll look more at the focus tree uh, as we as we play because you know there's a lot of detail here and we'll talk about it as we go uh, but for right now I'll even, I'll even talk about this a little bit later I was going to talk about it first but we've already talked enough uh, let's get the national bank because we do need to go down this route again we'll talk about that once we start this plane here uh, but right now we'll go down the national bank and this will give us a new industrial uh, advisor uh, company that we can get so let's just go and put it on speed 5 and let it play and uh, we could be training our troops up, actually. I did forget about that. Uh, so we're going to train these guys up. Anybody who still needs training. And you can see that most of our troops are pretty cruddy. Uh, they're not they're not great at all. As far as where we're going to put them, we know America's not going to attack us anytime soon. Well, you know what? We don't know what America's going to be doing because they could end up going communist or, or fascist. Uh, but for right now, let's just go ahead and move them all down to Mexico City. So move them over there. And we'll throw them into an army. And then we're going to train these guys, all of them. Uh, we could shift, click, and train them so that the regulars don't train. Um, but I do think we need army experience to make adjustments. Uh, because overall, our division designs are just okay. Uh, you know, our regular uh, infantry, uh, we need to get some artillery in here, clearly. Obviously, we don't have a lot of support either. And we can't even get any support companies uh, since we don't have support equipment yet. Uh, which is why we're researching that. We did knock out National Bank. It's a very quick one to get, luckily. And next, we're going to be going after the liberalize the banking uh, sector. Could go down here just to get that research bonus, uh, which would be helpful. Uh, it also unlocks a new political advisor. Uh, but again, we do need to really start moving down here. And I'm going to show you guys why. Uh, because this is all in regards to some decisions here. So we have the Cadillo Rebellion. Uh, and this happens in 106 days 
And I think what it does is just make the tensions high, which is going to decrease our stability. And then after that, I think we'll probably get, again, I haven't played as Metsuko in the uh, Law of Resistance expansion or the Man of the Guns expansion. So I'm kind of guessing a little bit on this. But I imagine that this would then happen again. We actually have some decisions available here we'll about to take a look at. I imagine this will happen again, and then from high, it would then result in the actual rebellion. Uh, so those focuses that we're doing here, uh, you'll notice that it changes um, the tensions moderate to low. Uh, so that is all in regards to these national spirits, uh, which this is the moderate one here, which is decreasing our stability by negative 5%. Uh, so we do need to keep that into consideration, and that's the reason why we're going down that route first. Let's see what this is. We have the incite tensions. Uh, so this will allow us to increase war, uh, war support, but it will decrease stability. So we don't want to do that right now. I don't know why we'd want to incite tensions anyway. All right, so the Germans have remilitarized the Rhineland. Remember, we do want to keep our eye on what everybody's doing since uh, everybody is set to random, so they could go any route. Uh, while I would really, really like to move down here to get this uh, next research slot, again, I kind of feel like we need to get rid of... Oh, did we get rid of it? Now we have tensions low. Maybe it doesn't get rid of it until you get down a little bit further. Hmm. And with that in mind, we might want to... Uh, I'm just kind of looking at what, what all we got here. I kind of really want to get that research slot. That'd be uh, super nice to have. I think we might go down that route, guys. Although I'm a little bit worried about the rebellion starting. This one's only 35 days, and it's and it's 200 political power. So we'll go for that simply because it's fast. So we're going to get that. Um, we also have a new decision here. Now let's take a look and see what this is about. Uh, so this is about giving up war support for stability. So essentially it's like the exact opposite of the insight incite tensions. Now I don't know if we're going to need to do any of these, but for right now we won't. I'm tempted to do the one for stability since our stability is so low. Uh, stability is pretty bad. Remember, once you get under 50% stability, you can get those negative events. And those are pretty bad overall. Uh, we're going to get the mechanical computing again for the research speed, which we are definitely going to need. And then we're going to go ahead and go for the basic machine tools. Uh, and I think we will go ahead and invest in getting some support equipment built. Uh, we'll just put it right here, and then we'll just take a factory from the infantry equipment. And this will allow us to, because I, I want to say that we, we're still pretty short on infantry equipment. Uh, but yeah, this will allow us to go ahead and get ourselves some, some support equipment built up so that we could, say, add uh, some support companies here. Though, of course, we don't have any support companies, huh? We'll still build that for a little while. Uh, any future factories we get will go into military equipment. Or, excuse me, infantry equipment. Uh, so, we have our planes still training, we have our, our, our troops training, but I did not train our ships. Uh, I wanted to see how our fuel was doing, and overall, it's not doing great. Uh, I, I think we'll wait to train up the ships, because I, I don't think we're going to be focusing that much on the Navy. We're going to be fighting the Americans, and uh, we're not going to overcome their Navy with our own ships. We'll have to defeat their navy using naval bombers, uh, our typical tactic as a as a minor power without without much of a navy. So we get the inland reform that'll allow us to modify our government. Uh, so let's see what we want to go with next. I feel like we should wait until this thing happens because I think every single one of those here can move moderate to low again. Uh, so that's just one extra benefit we'll get. So let's go in and start moving down towards the research slot and, of course, getting all these these benefits that we get here. Uh, so this is the uh, National Spirit Strike Breaking. It's going to give us better factories. So it's going to get something selected here, and then I'll go over these National Spirits, which I've been meaning to look at. Uh, so what are we going to change here? Uh, well, as far as the political advisors go, we don't have any available uh, that will grant us political power. Uh, the majority of the political advisors, as well as many of the research companies and even a couple of the, the military staff, are locked uh, by focuses for Mexico. Uh, quite a few of them. So we just don't really have a lot of options available until we get further down the focus tree. And yeah, I don't see 
us going for either one of these. Uh, consumer Good Factory would be helpful. That'll allow us to build quicker, uh, but we're not gonna get that right now. Uh, let's first get some research uh, stuff because as we've already discussed, we research incredibly slow. Uh, the one I wanna get is probably this one. Uh, this will allow us to research the fastest for the industrial research anyway. Uh, and the rest of these also are tied to a focus tree, so you really don't have an option. And we can get this for 75 political power, so not bad. So yeah, we're gonna go for that. Uh, so we can research the industrial tax quicker, which we're currently researching. Uh, as far as our material designer, do we wanna go for this now? I think so, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and get this here, even though, well, we're not really using it, are we? Yeah, we're not using it right now. Maybe it would be better to go ahead and get the financial expert. Now we might not keep him. I could see us moving to somebody else. Uh, however, again, many of these are locked uh, by focuses. So why not get him now? Uh, he's only 75 political power, he's pretty cheap. So yeah, we're going to get that. Um, and that'll uh, give us more factories, or maybe not. It looks like we, we only have five factories still. Uh, unfortunately, 5% just didn't affect it enough. Uh, but whatever. It'll help us later, I suppose. Uh, the second London Naval Treaty was signed. Oh, yes. I was going to go over these. And we do have something here. Okay, that's just the 25 days that's telling us that uh, uh, that is going to be changing to uh, attention is moderate, uh, which is fine. Uh, so... The first natural spirit we have here is the Caistas, and this is reducing our political power gain and our construction speed. Uh, so that's making us build even slower. Uh, and then we have the weak church. Uh, this is a very important dynamic here in the Mexican uh, focus tree uh, in regards to how strong the church is. Uh, I mean, do you completely get rid of the church? Uh, you know, do you maintain a separation of power between you know church and state? Uh, but, you know, still not, not actually persecute the church. Uh, many options uh, available. We'll see all that as we go. And it looks like we actually have an event uh, in regards to the church. Uh, but this is giving us a, a plus 10% factory output. Uh, we have the oil concessions. We're giving up some of our oil to them uh, until we kind of deal with that in the focus tree. Then we have the politicized army. Military leaders are extremely expensive to get new ones. And our planning speed is reduced. And then we have the, the ones we've already talked about, the Cadio tensions. We were we started at moderate. We dropped it down to low with that focus, and now we're back to moderate because of that damn event here. And I was right. It is going to, to restart now. And so we have 143 days before it goes to high. And again, I do expect that this will, uh, once you get to high, that the next one will result in the actual uh, rebellion. Uh, so you want to avoid that. So the Archbishop has passed away. Uh, so the most uh, Reverend Pascual Diaz y Barreto, Archbishop of Mexico City, has passed away today due to colitis. He was 59. I think that's how you pronounce that, colitis? Colitis? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, he was 59. His legacy is one of hardline opposition to the socialist policies of the government. Together with attempts at compromise towards the end of the Cristero War, his successor is Luis Maria Martinez, a social reformer and personal friend of President Cardenas. Uh, the successor was probably selected by the Pope to ensure continued peace between church and government in Mexico. So this will allow us to, for the first time, interact with those modifiers. And so if we go with this one, then we will get the assertive church which will remove that factory output that we're getting and replace it with stability. Or we could say burn in hell trader and replace weak church with atheist state and that will result in the opposite. Now, of course, we already know what way we're going on here. Again, these all do the same thing. You know, many of these, all the ones that are highlighted here in a church authority, either you know make you go you know one way with a stronger church or the other way with a weaker church or, or a church that you're discriminated against more. Uh, so we are gonna go with this one, of course, because we already know which route we're going. Uh, that does help our stability out, which I suppose is helpful because that does impact the uh, factory output. But overall, we're probably gonna have less factory output than before. Uh, so because we do have a little bit of political power, we do have the options to do some focuses here. And let's just see what they all are. Uh, so you can nationalize church lands and that will remove that that penalty, but we're not going to do that. 
Let's see what other options we have here. We have the improved worker conditions. I suppose that would be good for some stability. But we're not going to do that right now uh, because there are a lot of focuses that are going to fix our stability issues. So we'll just we'll just wait. Uh, as far as all the raids, we're not going to do any of these either. We're not going to be banning anything. Uh, we're, we're all right for right now. We are going to want to go fascist. So we're at 20%. Uh, so we're just going to wait. We're just going to be patient and see what the focuses do in that regards. We did finish looking at all these, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did. All right. So we got the strike breaking. And that's that factory output kind of makes up for our, what we just lost. So we're not actually gaining any more. Uh, so how much time do we have before this uh, rebellion happens or goes up to high? Because I don't want it to go to high. We don't need any lower stability. We have 140 days. So we do have a bit of time. And yeah, you can see it does continue to decrease. All of them decrease at the low. So we do have time to kind of move towards this research slot, I'd say. So this, is, this one's only 35 days. It only adds infrastructure though, which is, you know, obviously not great. So we're going to get one of them. And then I think after that, we might have to go, yeah, we might have to get the, the low removed. Yeah. I have to go down one more on there and then we'll be able to get the research slot. I don't want to go up to high though, just because I don't want to see what happens. Well, I'm not interested in seeing what happens there. Uh, we did get the basic machine tools. So we're going to go for the next one. And this time we are going to go with dispersed. I know I always go with concentrated. I prefer concentrated because I like the better factory output to me. That's far more important than anything that dispersed grants. Uh, but I never go for dispersed. So I, I do have those, those people who really like dispersed who are always commenting about me never going for it. Uh, in addition, I do expect we'll likely be changing factories around a little bit more often since I am going to try and have an air force and some tanks and troops. I'm going to have a, try and have a well-rounded military uh, and we're not going to have a lot of factories to do that on. Uh, so we'll have to move them around a bit uh, based on what we need at the, the particular time. So in that case, obviously dispersed is far superior if you're going to move factories around quite as much as I think we will be. So yeah, we'll go ahead and trade for that. Or excuse me, trade for that. We're going to get that, uh, get that tech. And the Spanish war has started. Okay. Uh, we won't be able to get involved in that because we are not aligned. So we won't be able to, to send them any uh, assistance. Uh, we can't even send an attache, which would be nice for the, the experience. Uh, however, we don't have the political power and really I want to spend it on getting other stuff right now. Uh, but yeah, you can see here for the sending volunteers that we would have to get world tension to 40% and you need 30 divisions, which we don't have, we have 21 divisions. So yeah, we won't be sending any volunteers. That just means we'll be able to, you know, fly through the time a little bit quicker. Uh, so, you know, rather than spending all that time uh, helping them fight their conflict. Again, I'd love to get this, uh, but because this here is uh, 104 days away, uh, I feel like we have to get the next one here, which really doesn't give us any, any actual benefit besides those building slots. But again, those aren't gonna help us at all. But we do need to make it down that branch. Uh, so overall, it's a good thing. Uh, so we'll get that one. And then once this, this will fire here again, it'll move it, uh, you know, cause we'll go down to low tensions. So when this fires, it'll move it back from low to moderate while we get the tech slot. Uh, so we have the Olympic games here. And uh, I hope you guys did have a fantastic uh, July 4th because I know some of y'all didn't watch that that EU4 series. Some of y'all only like the Hoi 4 uh, series. It looks like one of our our uh, planes, unfortunately, dropped. So what we'll do is we'll just set this here for any you know to account for any accidents that might end up happening. So we'll have like a, a plane to to replace them here. Uh, but yeah, I know some of you guys don't watch uh, anything but the Hoi 4 content. So you might not uh, have been watching that EU4 series that we were just doing as Milan, you know, to Italy. And uh, we had July 4th during that time. So I hope you guys had a good Independence Day if you celebrate it, if you're American. Uh, and overall, I guess we're, we're almost through July now. So I hope you had a good July. Because uh, many of you guys I haven't seen you in a while while we were doing that EU4 series, taking a little break from, from Hoi 4. Uh, so we can modify our government. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what's all available here. Again, no good options here. I typically try and get somebody who uh, gives us some political power so we can get through this a little bit quicker. But again, that's not really an option here. 
uh, and it can't really change away from here either because of our lack of war support. Our war support's just too low. Uh, so we won't be able to change any of these, unfortunately. That would make a good argument to maybe do that decision. Well, I guess we don't really have the stability to sacrifice for that, do we? Uh, so I suppose we'll go after the material designer now. Uh, just because all of these are locked to uh, get enough focus. So there's really not a lot of options there. And I think we're going to do the infantry equipment one. That'd be the best one to get. And Trotsky arrives. Of course. So exiled from the Soviet Union for opposing the rise of Stalin, blamed for all manner of problems from military setbacks to industrial accidents, and driven from country to country by political pressure, uh, political pressure, excuse me, uh, Leon Trotsky, communist revolutionary and author, has arrived in Mexico after a voyage from Norway on an oil tanker. Okay. Well, we already know that we're not going socialist, so we're probably not going to want Trotsky. It just seems like he would cause problems. Uh, him being here. Uh, I had one person ask me to do a Trotsky campaign, a Trotsky uh, socialist one, and I thought about it. Uh, however, I've noticed that a lot of the Mexico campaigns on YouTube do seem to bring Trotsky back and, and you know go with Trotsky as the leader, which you can do. You can bring Trotsky in as the leader. Uh, I think you have to do this one to bring him in as the leader. He's an organizational genius. Invite him to join the government. And if you invite him to join the government, uh, then of course you will piss off the Soviet Union, as you'd expect. Uh, the United States will also get quite irritated uh, that Trotsky is down here on their uh, southern border. You also lose a bit of stability. However, you gain Leon Trotsky as the chief of army. Uh, so you get those bonus benefits there. Uh, but yeah, obviously we're not going that route. Uh, we can say we aren't Stalin's puppets. Give him asylum. And that pissed the Soviet Union off. Um, but the United States will actually like it. Interesting. Or we can extradite him to the Soviet Union to face trial for his crimes. And the Soviet Union will like us more, and the Americans will like us less. Well, I'm almost fine with him staying here. Uh, he'll probably be killed anyway with an ice pick, so I'm sure Stalin will, will probably kill him. Uh, and I'm almost okay with doing this just because we're not going socialist, and I don't care if the Soviet Union is bad at me. Uh, that's mainly the reason why. It's just like... You know, screw Scott Stalin. He won't tell me what to do. So we're going to go with that. Something for that reason. And uh, I suppose having an increased opinion with the Americans won't hurt. Because I am going to try and avoid. And we do need to start paying attention to what everybody's doing on their focus tree. I am going to attempt to avoid war with the Americans early on. And here's the reasoning for that. And I think we're going to go with construction here, guys. I'm trying to think if there's... Nah, we're okay. We're going to go with the construction next. Here's my reasoning. The earlier we go to war with the Americans, the easier it will be. Uh, the Americans, you know, when they start out, they're nowhere near their potential power. Uh, obviously, from all their, their different, you know, terrible laws that they start out with. Uh, well, I guess we won't look at all that. But anyway, the, the, the terrible laws they start out with and, and, you know, they're, you know, demilitarized. They're, you know, looking for peace, looking to be isolated. So they're incredibly weak. Um, or, you know, not incredibly weak. They're the United States, but they're uh, much, much weaker in the beginning of the game than they are in the later game. So this is going to be our main enemy in the campaign. Uh, and we have borders with them. I prefer to fight them a little bit later when they're a little bit stronger rather than take this opportunity to fight them weaker. And if we win, which, you know, we're going to win <laughs> when we win, uh, then we become incredibly powerful. We get control of all their territory. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, we're not quite as strong as the United States is because this isn't core territory, but man, uh, you know, we're going to be really, really powerful. And, and at that point, I feel that uh, you're almost playing like a, a little bit weaker United States, essentially, rather than Mexico. So we are not going to go that route. Instead, we're going to we're going to conquer down here, maybe get involved in, in other countries' wars and, and then finally fight the Americans once they look a little bit more prepared and, and they're going to provide us a, a suitable challenge. I want them to... I want them to mess me up a little bit, honestly. <laughs> Just a little bit. That's why I gave them the two ticks, even though the AI uh, doesn't really need it as uh, the Americans. Uh, the Americans, uh, you know, their problem for the AI is, that, of course, that they can't get their troops across the sea without them all getting sunk. Uh, and we do have that rebellion that's about to fire, but remember, it is going to... Uh, just result in the, the tensions going back up to moderate, so it's not a problem. Uh, but yeah, the, the Americans don't really need to be upticked. 
my two points can say they have everything, you know, resources and manpower and production and civilian factories and a navy and they really don't need, uh, they have that sixth research slot, I forgot about that. So yeah, they absolutely don't need to be ticked up any further, uh, but we did, we ticked them up two settings and so between that and then giving them a little bit of time to get through their focus tree and get ready for conflict uh, should hopefully result in the middle, a little bit more of a challenge. Now, one thing that was expressed uh, in the comments of that U4 series, and let's get something selected here. Uh, no, we don't need to go down here. Rubber will be a problem. We'll deal with that later, though. Let's see, uh, probably radio to get that reinforce rate. Uh, that's always really helpful to get kind of early. Uh, also, anything that we want to build, though, really, we have no factories, so, so we really can't build anything. Uh, I would like to get, since we, we did put a factory towards support equipment, should probably make it worth it by getting something that we could you know, put into our units with that army experience that we have. So we could do that, like just get the engineer companies. That'd be an option as well. I think we'll do that since we're, we're close to 1937, but yeah, uh, not close enough. So let's get the engineer company so we have a basic support company here. We'll get that and then we'll start with the 1937 techs. Uh, but one person expressed uh, concern of that if uh, the United States gets involved with conflicts in Europe, then all their troops are going to be in Europe rather than, uh, you know, here defending their territory. Uh, so some people were concerned that they would be easier if it's later in, in the game because they send all those troops overseas. And I guess it really depends on, like, how late you wait and how much involved they get. But remember, if they're, they're going democratic, which I'm not entirely sure which route they're going. We haven't looked on this focus tree where exactly it looks like they're... They haven't even made the decision. Yeah, they haven't even made the decision which route to go just yet. Uh, I think it's through here, and I didn't see them get either one of these yet. But we haven't been paying attention, so maybe they did go for one of these. Let's just assume they go Democratic. Uh, and, and in that case, as soon as we go Fascist, they're going to start being con becoming concerned with us. And they'll start putting troops on the border. So I'm really not too worried about that, honestly. Uh, I think they'll they'll still provide a, a challenge. It really depends on, on how involved they get in Europe by the time we declare war, I suppose. Uh, so we did get that, that research slot, which is awesome. Uh, that will allow us to get the oil field expansion to get some more oil. Since as you guys see, our oil production's not great. Uh, we are being impacted a bit by our planes flying out there. And you know what? They're not earning any air experience, hardly, so we should probably just stop that. Uh, yeah, this is just not even worth it. I thought we'd get a little bit more. I know they adjusted like how much you get because before how much experience you got was like heavily based off of like the percentage of your military that was training. Uh, but they did adjust that since it was a little bit overpowered that way and also resulted in weird stuff like uh, people. And I don't know if this applied with the Navy and Air Force, but I know it applied with the Army. Uh, people would like delete all the divisions except for one and then just train that one division to get the experience up higher. In order to get rid of that problem, uh, they did make adjustments, and I assume they adjusted all of them like that. Uh, so, yeah, we're not getting hardly any air experience. So let's go ahead and go with this one next, the Cadillo Private Armies. And this is going to, again, bring us down to low tensions. Most importantly, get us the national spirit here, which will get us more recruitable population and higher war support. And that'll be enough to actually change up our economic law, in fact. So that's what we're going to be going for. And uh, you can see which route we are we are going as far as how we're going to deal with the general. Uh, so we do have the third research slot now. And we are close enough to 1937 to go ahead and start working on 1937 techs. We'll go ahead and get the dispersed industry two. All right. Uh, so we'll knock that out. And again, once we get that war support, uh, then we should be able to get the next economic law. Uh, and it is 112 for us to get this because of that, that bonus that we have uh, where we're getting a negative 25% uh, bonus here. So a little bit cheaper. And I typically don't like changing like slowly across them, you know, uh, because it's kind of a waste of political power. You know, you spend 112 here, you spend 112 here, and all the way down. Uh, so I typically don't like doing that. I like hopping, you know, even if I got to wait a little bit. Uh, hopping as far down as I can, so in this case we'd want to get to like partial mobilization. The problem with that, of course, is I don't know how long it's going to take for us to get our war support up. We might want to take a look at that before we actually spend the power, because uh, maybe it might be worth waiting, maybe not. Uh, and what is this? Oh, we have something here I didn't... Oh, it's the Rebellion. 
Okay, and that'll change it to high in 83 days. But I'm also seeing something else. Oh, it must be this. Yeah, it's this here. Pope Pius XI has issued a papal enc encyclical. Uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. And I, I should mention here early in this series for anybody new to the channel, I am not great with pronunciation, particularly in other languages, but also in English. Uh, so if I do pronounce anything wrong in the series, then just you know correct me down in the comments below respectfully, and I'll try and uh, you know get better. Uh, so he's addressing the Mexican situation. While the uh, Chris, what's it, Christiata? Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce that. Christiata was resolved that the negotiating table in the open bloodshed has been ended. The church is still worried about the direction Mexico is heading in. The encyclical urges Mexican voters to side with religious candidates in elections and calls for Mexican religious parties, such as the Catholic Action, to address social problems such as poverty to prevent more revolutionary violence. Oh, wow. Okay, so this will move it from assertive church to powerful church, which doesn't really seem to be that great. Yeah, it does have a less requirement for consumer good factories, but that probably won't even result in a single factory for us. Uh, and so essentially, we're actually losing stability, aren't we? Because I think, yeah, we have this assertive church right now. So yeah, I don't really think that we want to, to move to that one. Because that actually results in, uh, we just completely lose that stability bonus and instead get the consumer good factories. So overall, it's not really a great bonus. Uh, we could just, you know, try and balance it out here initially. Again, we are going to want to eventually, ooh, well, we did whatever we did. <laughs> Looks like we got a powerful church. I accidentally clicked on that. My bad, guys. Uh, but yeah, I was going to say we might want to balance it out some. Maybe if there's another event that happens, I guess we'll see what happens there. But yeah, stability is so low. Uh, I didn't mean to accidentally click that. Uh, but yeah, our stability is just absolute garbage, uh, which is having many effects. I mean, the political power, of course, is, is uh, you know one of the important ones because can't fill this out quicker. Uh, but yeah, the factory output is also impacting us quite a bit. Uh, and then we have uh, gotten that construction. Let's go ahead and go with... I feel like we don't have any factories to really worry about when it comes to uh, resources. Uh, so instead of going for excavation as I typically would. Let's just go down to construction too. So maybe we can get these damn civilian factories built. We built one of them. And with that bonus, we actually have seven factories building. Uh, so we get this done on the 12th of November, 1937. But again, factory situation, pretty garbage. Uh, so we did get that focus done. And now we can go with the support general Cedillo. Uh So this is one of the three men of power in the country, at least one, and then we have, you know, one up here dealing uh, with these two focuses, and that is uh, Calles and Plutarco is his first name, Plutarco E. Calles, and he is the former president, and he still has a lot of power in our government, so that's really what this one deals with here. Again, I, I figured we'd look at that a little bit more when we uh, actually got to taking one of those. And then there's a third one as well, which I'm sure we'll probably end up dealing with a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, you have to figure out what you're going to do with the general here. And you can either arrest him or you can support him. And we will be supporting him. Uh, so this will placate him. So we'll no longer have to worry about those rebellions. Uh, so that's good. Uh, and then he'll also become a field marshal. Uh, we haven't even looked at our generals and field marshals again because it hasn't really been necessary yet. And then we also get him as the chief of army as a pretty damn good option. Uh, and then of course, you know, we remove those penalties to stability that we've been getting, which is right now 3% penalty. Uh, so pretty good overall. It's gonna be quite helpful. Uh, and if you go down certain routes, then the general can go even beyond being just your field marshal. He can in fact end up becoming your leader, which is actually the route we're gonna try and go. We're gonna try and get him as our leader because he actually has some pretty damn good uh, bonuses. Now this is our current leader. Uh, and he is a uh, Cardenas, and he does not have any bonuses. Uh, so many of them do. Many of the Mexican uh, leaders do have have a special like you know leader bonuses. And we have the anarch anarchist uprising in the Spanish Civil War. So everything is going as you'd expect. We haven't really paid attention to that at all. We haven't really been looking at whatever he's doing, and I wanted to do that. So they're going to go with Britain, so pretty standard there. You got the BSA company here, so can't really say anything political-wise. Can't see what the Germans are working on. Uh, so France and, and Britain announce their alliance. What is this about? Oh, yes, just that rebellion. 
so yeah, we'll just kind of uh, see what everybody's working on, which route they're going. Uh, you know, obviously Italy and the Soviet Union still need to have their trees redone, so they don't really have, you know, many directions to go on that. We'll look at some of the other countries. They're doing the gateway to Europe here for the Dutch. Let's see what everybody's working on. Uh, it does seem like, despite it being on random, we're going to get, I mean, the Institute Royal Dictatorship, I think, is, uh, you know, just the, the top one here. It could go any route, so we don't know what they're doing here in uh, Romania. But for the most part, what I'm seeing is that most people seem to be going a more historical route, despite the fact that we have it on random. That's interesting, because we did the default setting last time that we got anything but historical. Is there anybody else to look at? I guess we can look at some of the uh, British Dominions. Look at the, the Canadians. Strengthen the Commonwealth ties. Yeah, I feel like, um, I mean, look at Australia. I feel like everybody's just uh, doing the historical route. All right, interesting. Uh, well, you know, when you put it on a random, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, so we did get the engineer company knocked out. And I think we will go ahead and add those into our division design so we can make use of that support equipment that we have. Uh, we eventually need to get the motorized, but we should probably focus on things that are going to help us right now, which would be the industrial techs. We'll go ahead and get the improved machine tools. Uh, yeah, we could also do that for extra fuel because, again, we don't really have a lot of fuel. And I did forget that I was going to stop training these guys. They're not using a lot of fuel, uh, but, yeah, there's really no reason. As you guys saw, we weren't gaining much from that. All right, and that actually helped out a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. So they were using a lot of our fuel. We don't really have much fuel yet. Again, most of our fuel is in the hands of foreigners. We still got to deal with those damn foreigners. Uh, so I guess we're going to go, and go with the construction next, or excuse me, the, uh, the resources next, just to have those. Eventually we'll want them. It'll help when we when we get control of our oil again. Uh, so we'll go ahead and knock that out. Could also go for other techs, I suppose, start improving our military. But again, we're probably not going to be at war for a little while. Uh, we did finish off that focus, so now we're completely done with this route here. We got our, our third tech slot, and we've gotten the support general uh, focus done, uh, which should re result in us no longer having to worry about that rebellion problem. So we could go ahead and start going down here to deal with the oil problems. However, I kind of really want to start moving down uh, this route here. Now, there is the military budget review, and I want to say that this does lock a political advisor which would be helpful to have because we could build the military factories quicker so i would like to get that at some point uh as far as um what we're going to get next though i think we're going to go with the stability our stability is pretty damn low uh, so let's go to go for that and that will then open up all of these ones as well give us some different options and it's only 35 days to get uh that stability so we do have the chief of army available and that of course is the general say dio and this is the division attack and i do want to say that is definitely the one that we're going to go for uh so yeah we can go and go for that now i suppose just because it's so cheap uh although i mean it doesn't really help us because we're not at war right now uh so none of these guys are available uh so can't go that route we could change uh our economy over to early mobilization again i would really like to wait till we get to 25 percent i don't know if we're going to get there anytime soon though it could take us a while uh, to get there. Uh, so I suppose we're going to go after the chief of army just because he's he's cheap and because there's really not very many options here. Yeah, we'll just go for the chief army. We're going to get him just so that we have that done. Again, not going to give us any benefits right now. We got the Hindenburg disaster. And U.S. Congress passes the Neutrality Act. So they are going with the, ne the neutral, you know, uh, route on trying to avoid conflict. Uh, but that that's one more reason not to go to early war with them because that route does result in them being more powerful overall like they have the ability to get more powerful uh, but in the early game they're much weaker than if they went with the limited intervention routes I think that's what it's called so one more reason not to go with the early conflict uh, so we did get that extra stability we're up to 27% and now we can go ahead and go uh, with any of these four focuses here. So next I feel like we should deal with Calles. And as far as, uh, and, and the reason why I think we should go for that is because we are getting this penalty here both to our political power and to our construction speed. So that's why I think we should go for one of these two. And uh, as far as which one to go for, honestly, I, I would probably go for Jefe Maximo, uh, which basically you know says that 
we're gonna keep them. Yeah, there's no way to just get rid of them. You know, if, if we got rid of them, we'd descend into deeper chaos, as it says here. Uh, so I would actually be fine with this. It gives a way better political advisor, uh, but it doesn't really matter because we're not gonna hire either one of these political advisors because they give support for non-aligned or, or unaligned and uh, democracy. So we won't go for either one of those. So essentially is, is which one gives the, the better bonus here. Uh, it's very clearly that one, uh, the Hefe uh, Maximo. It's very clearly better because uh, it, it just mo removes this one here and then gives you a new one, uh, which effectively removes that political power penalty and, and I think it actually gives you a bonus and also gets rid of the uh, construction speed. So I think you just get extra political power. So overall it's better than this one, which just straight removes the national spirit. Uh, so again, this option is better. However, if you do this option, uh, then he'll end up being our leader and he's not not as good. He's not the guy I want to be the leader. Again, I am gonna try and get uh, the General Cedillo as our leader. So just because of that reason solely, we cannot go for that one. We will go for exiling him. And I guess we'll just see what happens with that. I don't know if there's gonna be anything beyond just uh, the national focus and removing the national spirit. I suppose we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some more events or something tied to it. Could even have a rebellion. I don't know. Uh, I'm interested to see, though. Uh, so we'll wait until that happens. Now, in this first episode here, I'm trying to get as far as we can. Because, again, it's going to be a little while without any conflict because I'm not really in the position yet. And because we're unaligned, we can't, you know, do, like, a, a, little, a little conflict. I think we'll go ahead and finish up with the excavation. I do want to get the next fuel refining as well. Uh, we do need to get... Uh, obviously we should make sure that we get some, some you know focuses that actually help our military eventually uh, so I do want to start working on some of these uh, particularly like you know support weapons one and all that kind of good stuff however let's go ahead and finish up the industrial techs that we really really need so we're gonna get the excavation next and then we might even go for that fuel efficiency one again as unaligned uh, which we are 53% not aligned there I hate how that they don't have a consistent consistency in the the naming of that and Erhart did disappear so we won't be seeing her in our war with the Americans and it looks like the nationalists have won part of the civil war here in Aragon and so now they just need to deal with the Republicans here and uh, hopefully they win uh, rooting for the nationalists so um, what I was saying is we, one, I, I really hate how they call this non-aligned some places and unaligned other places. It's kind of confusing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I would really like to, to go to war down here, but, you know, it's just not an option. Uh, you know, we can't get the, the war goals until we have 50% world tension. It's at 7%. So, again, not going to, to be able to do a war for a little while. So we have knocked this out. I'm not seeing any events associated with it. So maybe there's, there's nothing else to it. Uh, we've just gotten rid of them. Uh, so now that opens up a couple different options. Now... Obviously not going to go with that one since we've already done the other one. Uh, not going to go with this one either. I think this is like an unaligned route. Uh, not aligned route, whichever one you want to call it. Or maybe it's a democratic one. Yeah, it's actually a democratic route. So this would result in uh, us going with a democracy. So don't want to go that route. However, we can do this one. This gets us a, a new general. Uh, we have a pretty good military advisor. Uh, it gives us some extra attack for our mechanized and our motorized. Uh, as well as our cab units, so we probably won't be using those in combat. So some good bonuses here. Uh, so we eventually will go for that. Uh, just the stability alone I think will be helpful. Uh, we're not going for that right now though. So we'll go for this one, not that one. Uh, then of course we have to control of the army, that's more stability and you get it in 35 days. Uh, so yeah, might want to go for that one now just again because our stability is garbage. And then we can start moving down these routes. Now I didn't talk about this yet and I did want to talk about this once uh, in this episode. So between these two different options here that we can go for, I kind of think we're gonna go with the legacy of the revolution here. Now, we cannot go with this one uh, because you'll notice here that there's a bunch of focuses here uh, that are kind of tight. But essentially, you can only have one revolution or one end to the revolution. Uh, and so we have this one, we have the communist one over here. Uh, you'll also notice that there's a couple over here that I think were tied to that. Oh, it's somewhere. Uh, this one's tied to that, uh, so yeah, it's that one. Then the party of the revolution. I want to say that that one's it's right here. So that one as well. Uh, again, there's multiple routes to go communist and fascist. Uh, so you know, there's those ones, and then in addition to those ones, there's these two here. 
And I think these ones are also tied to it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it's these two right here, actually. So going down these routes. Uh, these are also tied to it. So because we're going down this route, we're going to go with the Crusade Against Atheism. Uh, we will not be able to get that one, but that's absolutely fine. They both, they're both they both going fascist, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a couple bonuses to this one, uh, but uh, overall, yeah, we don't need to go that route. However, we can go down the gold shirts. There's no reason why we can't go down the gold shirts, and then down to Hispanic culture, and then into the Spanish Civil War refugees. So we can go that route. Uh, another option, rather than going down this route here and getting, you know, the, the benefits that I, I want to say we can get this one as well. Yeah, this one gives us some benefits that allow us to help out in some wars because we would be able to send some volunteers uh, because it does not require as many divisions. That's the big thing. Uh, divisions require to send a volunteer force, negative 60%. So essentially we could send volunteers if we wanted to. Now, uh, we need to take a look if we can build some units, by the way. And, of course, that would allow us to get the Hispanic culture one, which would be nice to have. Um, and I, I want to say you might need that one down here somewhere. Could be wrong, though. And not that one. There might be another one that you need that for. Or we could go down this route, the ban political militias. And then that will allow us to... Uh, I don't think you need this one here. No, you don't need this one here. We can get that one as soon as we get the control the army. Uh, but it would let us get this one here. So this is where you get rid of the uh, national spirit politicized army, but you actually get rid of that one here much quicker. Uh, while in this case, uh, this is actually just modifying it. So making it so it's not as bad. Uh, just kind of improving it or whatever. Uh, but yeah, then this, this completely uh, removes it. So that's no longer a penalty at all. But yeah, you're not getting the bonus that you get from this one which is, uh, I think, maximum command power increase. I think military leaders might, in fact, still be more expensive. Yeah, because they're 100% more expensive, and this is only a negative 50% cost. So it does look like that would... Well, it doesn't matter, because it gets chained down here anyway, it seems. No, it looks like they're still going to be more expensive. Uh, so yeah, leaders are going to be more expensive. That's something to consider. Uh, but you get more maximum command power, and then that's giving you some bonuses down here, as you can see here, with the uh, division recovery rate, which is incredibly powerful, plus 15% division recovery rate. That is excellent. Plan speed is helpful. And, of course, getting that fascist support would let us flip over a little bit quicker. Uh, we get a political advisor that would also allow us to do that and let us adjust fire war goals quicker. And then, uh, you know, one we already looked at here, international struggle, this would allow us to, you know, get the, to be able to send the volunteers quicker. And then the Hispanic culture, which is uh, going to get us the mobilization speed plus 10%. Per, plus 10%. Oh, it looks like you might not be able to do both of these. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can't do both of them because this is uh, giving you international struggle, struggle, and then this one is removing it. Interesting. Now, they're both only 35 days, though, so I suppose you could use them strategically. This is basically what this one does here. I uh, just kind of show you. Again, the most powerful thing here is the division recovery rate. Uh, that is very, very good. Uh, so that's the main reason why I want to go down this route. Uh, going down this route, though, again, does have some bonuses. And I will show that uh, research bonus for land doctrine here. Uh, the professional army, uh, this is going to get you a very good bonus here. All of your leaders are going to have one plus planning and one plus logistics. So that's actually a, a very, very good bonus. Uh, that's going to increase the those abilities for all of your current leaders as well as any of your future leaders. It's a very good bonus here. You do have the option to go down this route instead. This really doesn't compare, in my opinion, to this one, though. Uh, you know, less experience. You can have women as military pilots. Uh, again, I don't, I don't think that compares to getting the bonuses there. You do get two military factories. Uh, I suppose that's helpful. Now... When it comes to the Revolutionary Women one, you can go for that regardless of which route you go here, and that does give you three civilian factories, so super helpful. Uh, and then the Women's Suffrage one, we won't want to go for that one because that does increase daily democracy support. Uh, obviously, we're giving them the right to vote, so uh, we uh, don't want to go down that route uh, since we don't want democracy support. Although, that research bonus, if we have enough fascist support, I almost would want to go for it because that research bonus is pretty decent. That's pretty good. I don't know. We'll take a look at it and see. Well, it does require that you have elections. So, yeah, that might not work anyways. But yeah, I feel like it'd be better to go down this route. So that is the route that we would be going down. Uh, but for right now, let's go and do the control of the army. 35 days. 
Um, but I did want to kind of discuss that since I didn't really mention it yet. And uh, there's the little one taunt. Okay. And then, of course, Japan just declared war in China, so war in Asia has begun. Uh, but yeah, we have the little entente here, uh, which is called the Czech entente. And Yugoslavia is involved in it. So that's actually going to likely mess things up. Because Germany will now be able to declare war in Czechoslovakia. They would have, at that point... Um, oh, China actually declared... Well, that's interesting. China declared war in them. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's part of their, their focuses, I think. Uh, but yeah, they, you know, where they can decide to try and deal with the warlords before they fight Japan. Uh, but yeah, they declared war on them. So they have now joined the Japanese faction. Interesting, that's, I don't, I don't know that we've ever seen it happen quite that way. Very interesting. Uh, but yeah, this is going to mess things up because now the Germans will be able to conquer Czechoslovakia and completely annex them in a peace treaty without going to war with the Allies. Uh, and because they've annexed Austria by that point, you would assume, they would also be able to annex Yugoslavia. And maybe Italy would get a bite of that if they've joined their faction by then. So overall, that's probably going to be a negative thing. Uh, we'll see. Uh, sometimes Czechoslovakia ends up leaving that little alliance. I think that happens w based on these events that fire, where they could end up joining the Allies anyway. We'll see, guys. But it could very well cause issues or Yugoslavia being in that faction by themselves. That could be a problem, too. Do we want to get the, the fuel refining? Again, I do feel like we need to get uh, certain types of equipment building, uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we need any of this right this moment. Uh, I kind of just want to get like passive bonuses, since we don't really have very many military factories. Our military factories are uh, you know, we, they're almost non-existent. We barely have any. Uh, so I really feel like getting passive bonuses that help us out economically in any sort of way are helpful. Uh, that is actually takes a lot longer than I thought it would. And yeah, that's 201 days. Oh, well, whatever. We'll get more fuel from our finer refineries and from our, our oil. Uh, so, you know, it'll be helpful. Uh, although I, I think we'll probably be sitting on quite a bit of oil. Uh, but that will allow us to, like, train our ships, get some Navy experience going. And, and I suppose we could put our planes back out there. Uh, I am trying to get to the end of this year. I wanted to make two years since I knew that we are going to have a, a, a long peace period. So I want to make sure that we we make a little bit of progress here. Uh, so we did get the stability there. Now, again, you'll notice that there's a lot of options here uh, that we can we can go for. Uh, very few of these are mutually exclusive, so exclusive. So these two are, uh, but this one is not. So we can go down this route, and we know we're going to go down this route. However, one of the interesting things here is that we can go down this route here, even though we're not going to go down these. This one will get us some stability. Uh, and this is making the church even more powerful. So basically his law, again, we're talking about our former president here. Now he's the one that really weakened the church and, and discriminated against them. Uh, and so we're repealing his laws. That's essentially what's happening here. So we get some stability and uh, we'll make the church more powerful. Uh, we could do this one here and make the church weaker and get uh, stability, but, or excuse me, support, war support uh, instead of stability. Okay, that's interesting. How does that affect us as far as these ones go? I, I suppose that's what really matters. Uh, so this one requires that you either have atheist state or weak church, so it might be difficult for us to get. Uh, it does give us a Prince of Terror, though. So we'll have the non-core manpower bonus for that and, and all the other bonuses. So that's pretty helpful, since we probably will conquer some territory that won't be core. And so we'll be able to get a lot more manpower from it. So that's actually really useful uh, overall. While well, this one just gives us political power. Okay. Yeah, I almost want to go down this route just because, you know, because this is a, a new advisor. We had a new general as well, uh, Garza, which I don't know if he'll be any good, but it might be a bit difficult for us to get to the the atheist state or the, the weak church. So I really feel like we should probably prioritize getting research slots, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, so we can get one here, and you would just have to go down this route to get that. However, I feel like maybe nationalizing the oil fields might be something we want to prioritize uh, because as you can see here they may be persuaded to declare war by the oil barons and that's the UK and the United States I feel like they'd be less likely to cause problems in the early game uh, so let's go this route and hope that we don't have problems because that does also lead to uh, getting this one here does lead to a research slot 
though in order to get that we'd have to get quite a few focuses as you can see here uh, I got some good steel there though so that'd be helpful get a new industrial concern which we're not gonna be using uh, and then we'll get that research bonus uh, the research slot excuse me with a research bonus so let's go to go for the old field expansion so that's gonna get us a little bit extra oil let this play a little bit we are gonna have to end this this episode here soon I was hoping to get to the end of the year I don't think we're gonna make it we'll get to September 1st and go ahead and end it there I did forget to build units too by the way guys because we could do that. We could also make some adjustments here. I said I was going to add engineer companies, and then I didn't. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I think we're building guns right now, so we could probably get rid of one of these and, and throw some artillery in there. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get some artillery going there. Uh, and, you know, I should have added that here just because. Put them right there. So we're going to put the artillery there. And I don't think there's any other adjustments we want to make. Uh, so let's go ahead and save that and I should make those guys a little bit better. How do these guys look? Pretty cruddy. Okay. Uh, and then we have the cab units. Oh, we can actually make an adjustment here. So we could get rid of some of that artillery and I, I think we will. Um, remember the only thing we use these guys for is for occupations, which I don't even think we're doing any occupations. We don't have any non-core territory. So that's not really a problem. You know, we don't have any, you know, obviously we don't have any colonies or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, we don't we don't need the artillery there, but rather than adjust it. Let's just get rid of them We'll adjust it later once we are occupying something what we'll do is just change these guys out and change them over to like regular infantry units and uh, Keep them training here and that should uh, get us a few extra guns to to make up for those those changes We made those adjustments. So we'll take a look and see how things have changed now and you can see that we actually have a surplus of support equipment despite adding the engineer companies in there we're, we're still got a little bit of surplus so we must have built up a little bit of stockpile there a little bit short on the infantry equipment uh, artillery is not bad uh, again that's largely because we took that those guns I think from the uh, uh, the, the horses so we got the excavation that means we are done here uh, we don't need to get anything else uh, I think we might go with the radio next just because I mean it's such a, a useful bonus to have and again we just don't have any factories to build anything so really it's just about passive bonuses uh, for right now uh, so that's the first passive bonus we're gonna get that's really gonna help our military out uh, get that reinforced rate right up again though it's gonna be a little while before we see any conflict guys uh, because we have to start moving towards fascism or see world tension uh, increase in order to go to war with the south here uh, so uh, yeah I think that's an excellent spot to end the episode again we made a, a little bit shorter time I wanted to I wanted to get to the end of the year here we spent a lot of time in the focus tree though uh, but again, I really like this focus tree. Uh, I like it a lot. There's a lot of choices and options, and we'll continue discussing those as we move down them. Uh, but yeah, overall, I, I like the focus tree. Um, we, we definitely need to move away from this. I almost feel like if we had the political power, because there's so few things that we can get here, uh, due to the fact that they're all tied to, you know, uh, certain national focuses, I almost feel like it'd be good to, to go ahead and, and change over to early mobilization just because we're getting such nasty penalties here. You know, we're building those civilian factories much slower. Uh, we have less civilian factories, so it's impacting our oil. Uh, I just think it'd be much better to, to probably change that up. Uh, I think political power will, end up, will probably end up having an excess of it. Again, just because we can't, can't get any of these right now until we get certain focuses. Uh, there's also many decisions we could use that political power for it instead. Uh, so that'd be another option, like getting the improved worker conditions to get our stability up. would be another option, or, or doing something to get a little bit more war support. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Love hearing you guys' feedback, you know, any suggestions for the campaign overall, just as far as what we're doing goal-wise, if it wasn't clear with that focus tree. We are going to be going into the south here. Uh, I think what we might end up doing is conquering South America, or excuse me, conquering Central America. Uh, there's a little event here when it comes to Panama. I think it's like a border conflict with the United States for the uh, Panama Canal. Uh, so I think we have to have conquered Panama by then uh, in order to, to actually initiate that. I'm not entirely sure how that works. Uh, but there is like a border conflict about the Panama Canal, so you don't actually have to go to war to get control of that. And uh, then from there... We have a lot of options in South America. We could just straight up conquer them, or there are some routes on that that focus tree, which I think lets you create a faction, and then the South Americans are more likely to join that faction. 
And so I think that would be an interesting route. Uh, now, the only one that's going to be fascist is the Venezuelans. Uh, so, you know, it, it's hard to say. Well, you know, actually, Peru looks like they're going fascist as well. We haven't really dipped through South America yet and see where everybody's going since we do have everything on random. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we could go that route and, and just instead make a, a big alliance of, of uh, you know, I guess it would be a Hispanic, Hispanic countries, Hispanic alliance. And... Uh, they could help us out against the United States, or potentially at least be a place where the United States is, gets distracted in. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of options on what we can do. And then again, we can also help another complex, whether it's with volunteers or actually sending troops over there. Uh, but we wouldn't want to send troops out of Mexico until we've dealt with the United States, probably. Uh, as far as building forts, yes, we will build forts. Uh, we're going to need them, I feel. Uh, we'll probably have to give up certain areas, I think. Um, like might have to give up all all of Baja California I don't know that we would hold it and plus we have this nice river bonus that they attacked across here uh, it would be a bummer uh, but we're not losing much by losing Tijuana and, and uh, Baja California so we have this river bonus for them attacking across here and then we also have like mountains and stuff we might want to actually build our fort line up along the mountains make sure that it goes well we, we do have the river here so that's something to consider uh, but we will get a fort line. Uh, of course, I think that's going to be necessary. It is the United States. Uh, but I'm not focusing on that right now, guys. Uh, because, again, I, I'm not too worried about them. I think until we go fascist, we shouldn't have an issue uh, with, with them declaring war on us. Uh, another reason to, to wait a little bit till we go fascist and kind of get some of those other focuses knocked out. But, yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' feedback in regards to what you'd like to see in the campaign and what you thought about the first episode. And uh, if you have any experience with Mexico and, and their focus tree, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, those comments, those likes, all that stuff, all those interactions do help with the search engine. So I definitely appreciate it. helps people find the channel. Uh, if you're looking for any links, uh, then look down in the description of any of our videos. We have links to all of our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. As well as links to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. You also find links to our PayPal and Patreon and our Teespring merchandise store if you'd like to help support the channel, which we definitely appreciate. Uh, if you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for the next episode, which there will be an episode on Monday. I know there's not typically episodes on Mondays, uh, but you know, since we're starting this series on Sunday, it's a new series, we will have an episode on Monday. I'm going to record it immediately after this one, uh, so I, I won't get your guys' feedback uh, to respond to it for the next episode. Uh, since we, I am going to record these back-to-back -to, -back to ensure that we have a Monday episode, since I do work all day on Sunday. But if you're looking for anything else to watch, uh, then check out the front page of our channel. We got 3,000 something videos. I play a ton of Hoi 4. Uh, all the content is sorted by genre with one section specifically for Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, so you should be able to find something to watch, particularly if you like Hoi 4 content or, or Paradox strategy content. Uh, but we do play a lot of other games as well. Uh, I play with my wife and co-host Jinx on the PlayStation 4. We play you know, a bunch of different types of games. Uh, so if you're looking for a non-strategy content or even some strategy content on the console, then you might find something to watch uh, with those uh, series as well. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and end this one here. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.